One of the questions I get all the time is, hey Lee, if I switch over to a solution first agency model and I change my website, so I'm not talking about web design and SEO and all the different services that I offer, isn't it gonna be hard to rank on Google? Yes, <laughs> it's really hard to rank on Google for stuff you're not even talking about. But it doesn't matter because I'm gonna show you five ways to get better leads with a solution first agency site compared to a traditional site. And by better, what I mean is it's less work. You make more money and you get faster results. If you, are, if you want to see more details on all this, I put together a whole video workshop and I'm going to put a link in the description that goes to like what services we offer, how we get leads, how we onboard clients. The whole thing is there. So check the link in the description for that. Right now, let's just focus on the lead generation component of it because there's a big mindset shift that goes into how to get leads for a solution first agency because you're targeting a different type of audience. With a traditional agency, we're targeting a solution aware audience. So like when we had a traditional agency and, and we were in Richmond, Virginia, people could type web designer in Richmond, Virginia, and they would know that at, that at least one web designer lives in Richmond, Virginia. And so you could do those service in location style searches because people knew for a fact there, there were at least some people offering the services that they were searching for in the location where they lived. And so that is a solution aware audience. And when you're Focusing on a solution aware audience, it makes sense to try to get in front of those organic service and location searches. With a solution first agency, it's a different type of audience in the sense that they're not aware of the fact that you've created this unique solution. It's almost like a brand new product. And therefore there's not gonna be any organic search volume for that product. So rather than getting in front of the audience through organic searches, it's much more like a product launch where you do interruptive marketing I'm going to show you five different ways to do interruptive marketing for a solution first agency website right now. There's three things that we had to do to set up. So when we shifted from a traditional agency over to a solution first agency, it required like three steps to set up. And here's what the steps are. Like in our traditional agency, we were basically building websites for anybody. With our solution first agency, we had to pick an audience. And so we picked local business owners that have face to face interactions with their clients because that controls to some degree the types of digital marketing that you can do for folks. So we now had the audience. The second thing we had to do is we had to figure out a solution that created a measurable result for the audience. And a lot of times that means more clients, more leads, more revenue. We focused on more leads. So now we've got a lead generation platform as our solution, targeting local business owners as the audience. And then the third thing that we needed was a lead magnet to kind of get the relationship going. So there are three things that we wanted the lead magnet to hold, like three attributes for the lead magnet. One was we wanted the lead magnet to be genuinely helpful, meaning that it would really benefit a business. The second thing is it had to help in a practical way, meaning that it impacted the day-to-day -day operation of the business. It wasn't some kind of technical thing that would go unnoticed. And then the third thing is it needed to be educational, especially since that would help underscore our authority and expertise with regard to web design and digital marketing. So helpful, practical, educational. So what we ended up doing is we took our solution and we pulled out the five different pillars that we offered in the solution and we created one email about each pillar and then put people on a drip campaign for that. That was, the, that was basically almost an email driven course that was our lead magnet. So we go through all of the details on exactly how to do this in Blue Theory. So if you want some help writing the drip campaign and figuring out what to say and all that stuff, definitely join me in Blue Theory. I help you get that going. But that was the setup stuff. So now we've got the audience, we've got the solution, we've got a lead magnet to get the thing going. And then that enabled us to open the door to five different steps for interruptive marketing. The first one, the first of the five steps is just reaching out to current and past clients and offering the part of your solution that you now have that they don't have yet. So like maybe you already built the website and did the branding, but they haven't signed up for the marketing plan. And so you can just offer that to them. But it's one of those things, you gotta interrupt them. You gotta say, hey, we've got this new thing now, would you like to subscribe to it? But it's low hanging fruit. It's like, they're already your clients. <laughs> you already have that relationship there. And you can just say, here's this thing and boom, now you've got some extra recurring revenue coming in right off the bat. That's totally the easiest one to do. So that's thing number one. Thing number two is networking events. The real trick to getting results out of networking events was when we stopped going to these events, and having with like a really generic offer. Like I, I didn't want to go to any more networking events like BNI groups or whatever, and just be thought of as, oh, the L Lee's the web guy or whatever, because that's not a solution. So when I changed from just being the web guy to having a solution first agency style pitch, so like another thing that we do in Blue Theory is I'll show you how to pull leads in less than 30 seconds with an outcome driven elevator pitch. 
So I start going to these networking events with an outcome-driven elevator pitch, and I'm pulling leads in less than 30 seconds by telling people exactly how I help them. Because now, because remember the setup, it's like I know who I'm trying to talk to, I know what thing that I'm offering, and I even have the lead magnet offer to kind of get the ball rolling. So these networking events fundamentally shifted as a great way to get leads really, really fast. It's so much easier and faster to get leads when you can just go talk to somebody and get the lead boom right like that, as opposed to like blogging and getting on social media all the time and then waiting for months and hoping Google indexes your pages and all that other stuff. You can get leads like right now. So that was thing number two is going to the networking event with an elevator pitch that can pull leads in less than 30 seconds. The third thing that you can do and um, is, it was pretty easy for me to start scheduling myself to speak at the networking events. You know, like I joined BNI, I went to Chamber of Commerce. There's even a lunch and learn here in Williamsburg. I live near Williamsburg, Virginia. And so all of those places were places where I could say, hey, can I get the presentation next month? And then what you do is you take, you get like 15 to 20 minutes to kind of do something that's helpful, practical, and educational. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> that's our lead magnet, right? So basically all I did was summarize the lead magnet, use that as the presentation that I'm giving at these networking events. And now I'm pulling leads from that. So that was really cool. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing is I started to set up professional partner networks. So what I was doing was I was going around trying to find other types of businesses that would serve the same type of audience that I'm serving, like local business owners, which is again, why you had to make the steps. Like when those setup steps we talked about, like as soon as you know who your audience is, you can then find other people that have the same kind of audience. If you don't have an audience, then it's very hard to do the step. But once you do have an audience, you can find other business owners that serve the same audience, but in a complementary way. And then you develop a partnership network with those types of people where you can pass leads back and forth. Even if they're not part of a BNI group or Chamber of Commerce or whatever, it's like you can just go to these different partners and pass leads back and forth. And, but that again, that is interruptive marketing because one of the things that you do is you actually show the partner what your offer is. And again, we go through in great detail on how to do this in Blue Theory. But the idea is, your offer makes their offer better. <laughs> and so therefore they're inclined to continue to promote what you're doing because it makes what they're doing even better. And now you're getting referrals from partner networks. And then the fifth way, and this is the most time consuming, lowest converting way, but still very useful is cold outreach. And so we have these, um, I don't do cold outreach in terms of like large blasts. Like I, I don't like to, send gigantic email blasts to local business owners and then, and then hoping that they click on a link or something like that. I don't do it in, in a mass marketing sort of a way. What I do is a much more personalized approach. In fact, I've even got a template in the Blue Theory um, community where you can kind of copy and paste what we're doing. But you take part of, take like a little piece of your solution that you can do and say, hey, can I, can I just do this little thing for you right off the bat? And then you start offering that to people through these cold outreach emails, which you can, you can find them on Google Maps, you can find them on LinkedIn. There's all kinds of ways. You can find them through relationships, like, like, um, like referral relationships from the partner network, all different kinds of ways you can reach out to people, but just kind of go one at a time, client by client. You have a templated message. So you're not writing the message from scratch every single time, so it doesn't take all that much time, but you do customize each message and then send it to these people that you think would be a good fit that are in your target audience. And you've got, and you're interrupting them because they would never think to search for what you're offering them because they don't know what you have exists because you just created it. So it's a solution unaware audience which I do interruptive marketing. But if you do those five things, I literally guarantee that you will make more money, get better clients, get recurring revenue. And it's so much easier than trying to like blog all the time, you <laughs> be on social media all the time and, and then just hope that your blog posts get properly indexed and like all of that organic stuff. It's like, if you feel like you wanna do the organic stuff too, it's, it's not an either or thing, by the way. So the last thing I wanna say about all this is it's not either or, you can do both, right? You can have a traditional agency website and also a solution first agency site if you wanna do both at the same time. In fact, I think it's probably a pretty good idea, at least in the beginning to do both at the same time. The point of this message is, that if you have a solution first agency website, you're marketing it in a different way than you would a traditional uh, agency website because the traditional agency site is a solution aware audience. We're now talking to a solution unaware audience. And that means instead of organic searches, it's much more like a product launch. And then you've got two things pushing your business forward in the right direction. And then you might say, well, what if you set a goal of like, you know, making a hundred grand this year or something like that? Or if you're like me and setting goals doesn't really work for you, 
Check out this next video and I'll show you what I do that is so much more effective for me than setting goals. So check that out and see what you think.